set up two parts for this paper. In part number one, you can't use a calculator. There are 10 marks altogether for this part. We're going to go through each question in turn for both parts. Question one, work out 35 times 20. There are different methods you could use. What I'm going to do now is go and multiply 35 by 2, which gives us 70, and then add the zero at the end. And that gives us 700. 575 divided by 25. How many 25s fit into 57? That is two of them. That make 50. And we've got 7 carried over. Now, how many 25s fit into 75? That is exactly 3. So the answer is 23. Question 3. Which one of the following lists is in order, starting with the smallest amount? We've got 50 millilitres, 1 litre, 500 millilitres. We know that 1 litre is equal to 1,000 millilitres. So, out of 50, 500 and 1,000, 50 is the smallest amount, so it's either A or B, but in A, we've got right after 50, we've got 1,000, and that's not in order, so B is the right option, the correct option. Tick all the shapes below that have two lines of symmetry. So we've got this rectangle first, which has two lines of symmetry. The triangle doesn't have two lines of symmetry. There is just one and the oval does, whereas this parallelogram doesn't have. So those two shapes have two lines of symmetry. What's the next number in this sequence? We've got 2.6, 3.8, 5.0. If we try and work out the difference between 2.6 and 3.8, that's going to help us work out the missing number. So 3.8 take away 2.6 gives us 8 take away 6 is 2, 1 is 3 take away 2. So 1.2 is the difference. So that is the same now here. So we need to add 1.2 to 5. So 6.2 is the next number in the sequence. Round 862 to the nearest 100. So locating first the 100 digit, which is the 8. And we're going to look at 6 to determine what happens to that. Do we keep it as 800 or 900? And this is closer to 900 because this digit is a 6. 5 and above means rounding this up. So that 900 is the answer. Which of these is the lowest number? We've got 827.5, 827.29, 827.78, 827.7. So the whole number part is exactly the same. We're just looking at 
the next digit to determine which one is the lowest number. So we've got 5, 2, 7, 7. So the 2 is the lowest one. That means option B. Question 8. A man working in a warehouse is only allowed to lift boxes that weigh up to 25 kilograms. Which of these boxes is he allowed to lift? Tick the boxes. So anything that is lower than and including 25. So that is 900 grams. That is less than one kilogram. So he's allowed to lift that. 31 kilograms is higher than 25. So we can't tick it. 950 grams is less than one kilogram so again we can tick that 22 kilograms is lower than 25 so we can tick that as well the delivery driver needs to go from the furniture shop to a customer's house in which direction is the customer's house so we can see that is north here and that is East, so this is in between them two, so northeast. Question 10 This graph shows the sales for a shop for six months. We've got number of sales. And we've got the months given to us. In which two months did the shop have its two highest sales? So we're looking for two of the highest sales. The highest point seems to be here, which is October. Then the next highest one is this one, November. So October and November are the two months. This is the end of the first part. From now on, you can use a calculator. There are 30 marks for this part. What is 244.75 rounded to the nearest pound? So to the nearest pound means that we'd have no pence. So looking at the digit next to the decimal point, we've got a seven. That means we're going to round this up. So it's going to be 245 pounds. Which one of the following is the best to measure out 200 grams of butter? We've got scales, teaspoon, tape measure, measuring jug. It's grams that we're measuring, so it's got to be scales. It's the mass weight. What's the next number in the sequence? So to get from 17 to 34, we add in 17, same thing over here, we add in 17, so we must add 17 to 51 to give us 68, and we can use a calculator for that. Question 4, customer wants to buy a sofa that costs £699, he has £480 cash and these vouchers. Does the customer have enough money in cash and vouchers to pay for the sofa? Explain your answer. So in terms of vouchers, 
he has got 25 and 25, which makes 50. 75, 100, 125. So 125, we're going to add to that the amount in cash, which is 480 pounds. And this makes 605 pounds. The amount that he needs to pay is 699. So he hasn't got enough. No explanation. He only has six hundred and five pounds, not six hundred and ninety nine pounds. Question five A customer buys a bed. Bed price is nine hundred pounds. She must pay one fifth of the price today. She will pay the rest when the bed is delivered. How much will the customer pay today? So we're looking at one fifth of 900, which we're gonna work out by dividing 900 by five. I'm gonna show one fifth here. So 900 divided by five, that gives us 180 pounds. How much will the customer pay when the bed is delivered? So 900, take away 180, that gives us 720 pounds. A man wants to buy a wardrobe. The shop has these wardrobes. Model 20, model 50, 60, 80 and 90 and we've got different widths and prices. He measures the space for the wardrobe. Edge of the space comes to here. So just over 140 centimeters. Which wardrobes will fit into the space? So anything up to 140 should fit. So this one does, this one does, this one does. So model 20, 60 and 80. Which wardrobe should the man buy? Give a reason. So having a look at them, we've got different prices. This one is the cheapest. So I'm gonna go for that. So M80 because it's the cheapest and it actually fits into the space. Price 280 pounds. Reason it fits into the space and is the cheapest. Question seven, a customer called Mr. Brown, phoned to order a chair this morning. This clock shows the time he phoned, which is 9.20. Mr. Brown says he will collect the chair from the store in one and a half hours. Write a note in the book to say when Mr. Brown will collect the chair. So 9.20, if we add one hour, this is going to be 
10.20. If we add 30 minutes, it's going to be 10.50. Mr. Brown collecting the chair at ten fifty. Question eight A supervisor keeps records about her team. She wants to find out who made the most sales today and the value of their sales. She works out the value of the sales each salesperson made this morning. She put this information into the following chart. The table below shows the value of sales each salesperson made this afternoon. Which salesperson made the highest value of sales today? Explain your answer. Use numbers to help you explain. So it's about today. We've got afternoon in the table. And we've got the morning in the chart. So we've got to combine them both together. So Rob made, we go down, it's here, so 200 and 10, 20, 30, 45, 245. In the morning, let's have a look at the next one. We've got Mo who has made two hundred and sixty, seventy, eighty, ninety, two hundred and ninety. Daz has made 150, 60, 70, 80, 180. Colin, this point here. So 260, 70, 275. And Ali has made 210, 20, 35, 235. So adding these together to get the total for the day, get 458 for Ali, 530 for Colin, 429 for Daz, 527 for Mo, 540 for Rob. So out of all of these, Rob has the highest amount. And we've shown the working out above. Question 9. 
The manager of a bed store needs to draw a line graph to show how many beds they sold in the last three months. Draw a line graph to show this information. Put labels on your graph. So we'll show the beds sold vertically. We've got 50, 70, and 80. And we've got the months, January, February, and March, that we're going to show horizontally. So month, you could start from the beginning if you like, but I've created a gap and that is perfectly fine. We'll make this three squares wide. So we'll put January here and then leave a gap of one square, three squares wide for February and then again gap because I've left it at the beginning so then keeping the same width we'll put number of beds sold Fifty, seventy, and eighty. So eighty is the highest. So we'll have a look at how many squares there are in total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So we'll represent ten by each square. Starting from 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and so on. For January, it went up to 50. So right here in the middle. For February, it went up to 70 and for March it went up to 80. We'll connect these dots together and you can use the ruler for this. And we can get rid of these dots we had here. They were just for our reference. And our line graph is complete. Question 10. A customer goes to the cafe in the furniture shop with a friend. They look at the price list. She buys a neck sandwich, a banana and a tea for herself and the same for her friend. So we've got two lots of egg sandwich. So two egg sandwiches, two lots of 2.25 which makes four pounds and 50 pence. Then we've got two bananas, 59 pence each. So that is one pound, 18 pence. And then we've got tea, two lots of 95 pence, which is one pound 90 all together. This gives us seven pounds and fifty eight pence. We've shown the working out up there. So that is fine. The customer pays with a twenty pound note. 
how much change should she get? So we've got 20, take away £7.58 is 12.42. So £12.42. pence. So this is about 12.50. Add to that about 7.50. And it totals 20. And this is the end of the paper.